I've always had to face trials and tribulations in some form of matter. Though I had, you know, relatives and family that were close, and I know they loved me. I know they always meant the best and loved me. But I felt like nothing was ever stable. I felt like it was always somebody leaving. The first time I found out to start a story was people were filling out financial aid forms and they, he came in and said, I want a Pell Grant. And I said, honey, did your parents fill out the paperwork? And of course I stepped in it and he said, I don't have parents, I'm homeless. So for me that was, it was heartbreaking. And um, <clears throat> I said, Dakota, that's terrible. And he said, no, it's not. He said, that's who I am and that's where I'm from and it's okay. I didn't really know my dad, but I knew who he was. But I didn't, I never had a true relationship with him, even when I was in Miami. But I had comfort in my mom because my mom, she loved us very much. And she had a, a manic depression illness. And there, so there would be times where she wasn't home. It was just real tough when we got taken from her. But uh, by the grace of God, it was a blessing in disguise because I do have a mother uh, named Beth, who I love very much as my sweetheart. I was with his father and I were living together. We'd known each other off and on since we were 15. Things where they were living in Miami that with their mother deteriorated rapidly and he was in a pretty bad way. And the state removed them and put him in foster care. When I got the foster care, we got sent to a home, which was, to me, I didn't like ever. And um, I wanted to, uh, to see my dad, because when I was when I found out that my actual dad was coming, trying to get me out, I was really excited about that. And I, we fought for about eight months, monthly, back and forth in Miami to get him out of there, and finally got the A-OK -okay and took him home, and the story goes on. His environment wouldn't have changed if it weren't for Beth. And when you find out what his environment was and what was his normal, it's shocking. So she changed his normal and it changed his story completely. When I was um, with my dad and Beth, my dad was, a, uh, he was heavily into drugs and people in and out the house in the middle of the night sometimes, hearing Beth fight off people. It became out of control. So for all of us, a peace of mind and for him to be able to face needing help and going to rehab, we had separated and Dakota and his brother chose to go with me. So this is Oak Hill. This is my house. This is where I'm from. This is where I had lived when we left the projects in New Smyrna. Um, my, bat, my dad and Beth had split up. I stayed here. Oak Hill is really tight, very tight community. Um, even the, from the, the kids get raised like that, too, to kind of understand that. Uh, so I take pride in it, to be honest. I take a lot of pride uh, coming from Oak Hill. That's why I got it on my arm. I take a lot of pride in this. Um, we still played a lot of, we played football here too though, right here. Used to be a little volleyball net right there. But we used to play football right here, like tackle football. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of good memories, a lot of good stuff here. Um, used to do pull-ups on this right here, on these. And I like pull-up contests, all kinds of stuff. This is where I first really developed more so. I started really developing, so taking football seriously and uh, studying the game and things like that. It's real cool. It's real cool. So as my dad, he went to rehab, he got clean and um, got back into my dad's life. Um, he was doing really well, very well, and they were they had good time with him. He was able to come to football games every one, and then he was able to visit with them on the weekend. Sometimes they'd go and stay at his house, and they just, he was there at the other end of the phone. They knew that. The time that he 
had that I had with him, like that solid, it was probably from the seventh grade to ninth grade, was the best years ever. So it's just like it just hit me. It hit me so much when he died um, my freshman year in high school. And, and really, for me, I felt like it was like here we go again. I was kind of just real numb just real angry. I ain't go to school for like two weeks. I was real mad, just frustrated. Those were a lot of things, then to lose him, right? And at that age, for a young man, that's very difficult, very difficult. Just got your dad, just really had your dad. But by the grace of God, again, Beth was there, picked me up. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. It, it, was all, it was all a blessing in disguise, really. Dakota, has taken all the things that would be detrimental to other people and remedying them in the best path for him and what God shows him he should do, and he does that. He overcompensates some. He is a bit of an overachiever, but there's not one thing wrong with that. That's who Dakota the man is. You know, he has gone through so much since he's been here at Wisconsin. Um, I ended up getting three surgeries, an infection. Um, it got in his bloodstream. The infection was in his bloodstream, and it could have been deadly. And uh, the sad part is Dakota had no idea how hard it was on him and how, on his body, and he didn't realize that it could have been the end of his life. Uh, the rehab took a lot longer than it was supposed to. So I never really had the off season. I never had no off season training really, which was frustrating because I'm supposed to be one of the safeties on like one of the best defenses in the country, and yet I'm not healthy. Um, so it was nerve wracking a little bit, but my bro Musso helped me out a lot with that. For him to come back and be able to play, you know, without going through the training or going through the entire spring ball that most guys get to go through, it's incredible, and he still had a great season. Dakota, in, in big moments, made big plays for us. And, you know, certainly the, you know, the first game LSU and the, and the pick. Harris back to throw, under pressure, he spun away from Beagle. Harris throws to the left, and it's picked up! It's picked up by Dakota Dixon! I honestly felt like God brought me out of that situation. I don't get it to, the, to this day, there's no way you come out without no training, without running, and being able to play against the number five team in the country as your first game. And then from there, keep playing. He just has so much faith and said that, put, his, put it in the Lord's hands, is what he told me, and he takes care of me, and, and he has. And it's been incredible to watch him through those phases too, because not only has he dealt with a hard uh, past, but then he's had some hardships here, and how he's overcome them is incredible. Not all the people that impacted him have always been positive, but he takes a lesson from every situation, every, looks it seems to me, every circumstance, every experience, and yet it shapes him and drives him and motivates him to be the person he is, and yet he's still, he's gonna get, give more, he's gonna continue to grow. He, it's an unbelievable mindset that he has. He believes in working hard, Nothing was ever given to him. He had to decide the kind of person he's gonna be. He would rather, he would rather people say that he's a good person than a good football player. And, and I just, I love that about him. Dakota, I remain in a state of awe. It's always something bigger and better and bigger and better with him. So I, I feel like my hardships and uh, trials of uh, They've uh, built me to who I am today, and I'm proud of them. And I wouldn't take nothing back. I wouldn't change not one thing, not one single event that ever happened in my life. I'm, I'm, at, I'm grateful for them, in all honesty.